Hi folks, I'm Ethan with two guys from Ryan. Today, Rob and I are taking a look at a 2023 Mercedes-Benz EQS 580 4Matic SUV. And this is the Pinnacle trim level. Today, I'll be covering the driver's information and infotainment screens, as well as talking about the passenger screens and the rear media screens. I'll give you a general overview, show you how to access information, and do a deep dive. Let's get started. Today, we're working with our friends at Sears Imported Autos, selling beautiful Mercedes-Benz in Minnetonka, Minnesota. All right, so um, the screen is, it's actually got three different screens in there. It's all covered by one uh, piece of glass, but the driver's screen is a 12.3 inch screen. So that's what we're gonna start with. And uh, it's a typical MBUX uh, setup here. So on the steering wheel, you've got uh, an OK button with four arrows, which is a swipe pad. You've got a back button and a home button. And those are the ones you're going to use to control the information in the screen. Now, currently, we're in a classic uh, view. And if I press the home button, you're going to see that I can go, uh, let's start with understated. So if you want to get rid of a bunch of information, here we go. And if you want, you got to press the home button again. Then we're going to go over here and we'll press, oops, I should have done that quicker. We'll go over here to sport and we'll click. And, that, and that's a fun one to watch when, when you're driving. Uh, we'll press home. Okay, we're going to go over here to, uh, we were seeing classes, so we'll go to navigation, click OK. Now, this is if you want the kind of this full screen navigation. You can also use this same view with um, any one of the other gauges, but that gives you a full screen view. We'll go back to home again. Let's go over to assistance. Here you get all your driving aids. So if I turn cruise control on, if I want, yeah, I can't set it, of course, but you would see uh, lane guidance here if we were uh, driving, that kind of stuff. All those little safety features would show up. All right, press home. You got a really cool off-road page here. Okay, so it's going to tell you your steering angle, uh, which I can't change because my camera is mounted there. Uh, you got your elevation. You got a great compass. Over on the right, you got a percentage of power used, and you got a uh, uh, the percentage of charge, like regen charge, at the bottom of that on the right. And then you've got your uh, latitude and longitude location down there. That's some really neat information. A uh, great, great screen. All right, we'll press the home button here again. And then you can go to your service page. All right. Now, I'm going to go back to the classic view for a minute. Press OK. And we're going to talk about the information that is between the two gauges here. Of course, you've got um, miles per hour gauge on the left, and then you've got a percentage of power being used on the right, and then your um, percentage of charge down below in the middle, or down below in the middle of the gauge. And then you have something that says normal recuperation. Well, if you use the shift paddles, because they're not shift paddles, and you press the minus, you can go, I think I have to be actually in drive to do that. But if I go there, you get strong recuperation. And if I press the plus sign twice, I get no recuperation. So no recuperation is going to be, you take your foot off the accelerator, it's going to coast like a regular car. You leave it normal, it's going to give you some regenerative power. So it's going to start to, to slow the car down the minute you let the accelerator up. And if you do strong recuperation, well, then you're going to slow down even more. But it's regenerating more power. Okay, put it back into park here. The C at the bottom here tells you what drive mode you're in. Okay, so let's talk about the information in the middle. Now, to do that, you're going to either swipe, uh, actually, you're going to swipe up. Okay, you see all those little dots? On the right-hand side, that's where the where the, my red dot is climbing. Let's go to the top. So in this page here, you can look at a trip meter. So at the top, you've got what looks to be like watts per mile, and then your range, your what, what you've driven so far, uh, how long you've been driving, and then your average speed. If I go down one more, this is the same screen, but it's from reset. The first one was from the very start. Uh, when the vehicle was started, okay, equal display, how well you're driving. Uh, range, I love this, so it tells you you've got 190 miles to go. Um, at minimum, you'd have 134, uh, so I, I like that view. 
consumption from start. Attention assist. Okay, so that's just going to tell you if it senses your hands are off the steering wheel too much or the car's weaving too much, it's going to recommend you take a break. Go down again. You've got your media. If I go down one more, see, you can have your navigation screen fit between the gauges like I talked about earlier. Okay, now I'm going to go up one. For media, if I want to change the channel, I just swipe on the pad. Okay. If you want to set uh, one of these as a shortcut, okay, you can just click and hold on the OK button, and then you would go over here and click Yes, and then you would set that as a shortcut. Okay, I'm going to hit the back button here. All right, let's 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 take a look at one other screen here. So I'm going to go to Sport for a minute just because it's a really different look. And if I wait a second, let that disappear, You'll notice that in this particular screen, I don't get all those screens I got in the classic view. Okay, there's there's literally no space for them to go, so no matter what I do here, I don't get that. So if I go to understated, I'm also not going to get it because the whole point of understated is, well, you don't have much information showing. All right. So if I go to assistance, this could be the same thing. So if you want to see all this information, you're pretty much going to have to stay in the classic view. Now, I'm going to show you one other thing here that's really cool. So I'm going to press the home button, okay, and I'm going to swipe up. You've got a whole other menu up here. This is the controls for your HUD display. So you can have, you know, your sign reading on or off. You can have a sport view. And, and, and actually, that stays in additional to the digital uh, speedometer that's on there. Uh, speed limit reading sign, augmented reality, eco display, and then uh, you can turn the heads-up display on or off here. And here, if you click, is where you can adjust it. So, for instance, if I want it lower, I can just go like this on the uh, trackpad, and I can raise or lower it. And then if I hit the back button... And I go back to settings and click. I can also go right or left for brightness. And it is a really, really nice HUD display. Um, it sticks, it, it, see, it feels like it sticks way out there on the, on, the, on the hood. Hit the home button here. All right. So, you know, up on the top of this screen, you're going to see you've got a sign reading on the left. So I'll tell you what the speed limit is. Your cruise. Um, Indicator courses has uh, radar dynamic cruise control, and you got your uh, miles per hour, and then you have got uh, your lane keeping assist on that side. Uh, but basically, that's it for the driver's information screen. Next, we're going to move over to the infotainment screen. All right, so moving over to the center screen, this is a 17.7 screen. This is the hyper screen, uh, and, and it is it is awesome. It is massive. Now. Uh, the screen itself is basically divided into two areas. You've got this area where you see the navigation map, and then you have got the climate. The climate part never changes. It never goes away. Uh, so what you have access to as far as the screen is this area that you see right here. Now, this has a lot of intelligence built into it. So basically over here, you're going to have your all of your basic things like your phone and your media and that kind of stuff. Over on the far right, Right down here, we see connect device, so we usually be a couple more. But it's going to learn as you drive, and it's going to suggest things that you need at the time you need them as it learns your habits, which is way, way cool. So it tries to pop up everything that it can um, sort of before you even ask. Uh, so that is really, really cool. All right, so um, let's let's just start right down here. Climate, basically, you know, you're going to go up or down to set the, the, the temperature. Um, you can see that the ambient light changes. This has uh, close to 180 to 190 different combinations of lights for the ambient lighting. It's just huge. Um, you got your fan speed right here. And then over here, you got your passenger. Now, this is four zone climate control. So the rear passengers each have their own climate settings. And then, of course, uh, you got max defrost right here, rear defrost right there. Auto. If you want to make any other adjustments, you have to go into the climate menu and then you can adjust for the first row, like where the wind is blowing. And you can, of course, have all three going. You can hit the sync button in case 
uh, your passenger is at a different level. Hit sync, brings them back both to the same temperature. Uh, and you can have it on eco mode, uh, comfort, eco, or eco plus, which is just uh, energy saving, but there's an increased risk of fogging up. So on both those, comfort, you don't have that risk. Okay, you can control the second row seats right here. You can look at air quality. Okay, and, th and this is um, real time. So it's telling you uh, what it is. So the exterior is pretty good, and the interior is down to one. So it's done some filtering, uh, which is really cool. And then you can set pre-entry climate control here. You can edit departure times. You can say activation when unlocked. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a really cool thing. Um, if you tap your seat, then you can turn on uh, the climate control for them, which I think is really cool. Uh, the rear center seat doesn't have that, of course, but the, but the two outboard ones do. All right. So that's the basics of climate. Okay. Now, up here, you've got an... Uh, uh, an EQ icon, so we'll click on that. Okay, that's uh, part of the navigation, so you can look at previous destinations, charging stations, parking spaces, etc. Just for route, you can look at range, charging, and then consumption. And then if you go to the gear wheel, you can set some things for the navigation, like avoid freeways, toll roads, carpool lanes, that kind of stuff. Okay, you can also um, adjust the messages and the acoustic signals um, that the navigation system gives off. All right, so I'm going I'm to click outside of that. So that's where that is. So you've got a compass right here. You've got a where to here. Uh, you need to be aware that when you plot a course in this, it's intelligent enough that it's going to figure out um, not only what your range is, it's going to plot in a charging uh, point for you to stop and charge if you need to. Um, it's not going to leave that up to you. It's going to tell you you'll need to charge. And it bases that off your driving habits. So one owner may have to charge more frequently than another, depending on how, how, how uh, heavy your foot is. All right. Up here, of course, you've got profile settings. Okay. There are three ways. Once you set up a profile, uh, there are three ways to activate it. So there is a um, a touch pad. Um, a finger sensor uh, in the center console that you can touch, and then uh, it will activate. It'll recognize your voice to activate, or it'll recognize your face, which I just think is pretty cool. Uh, and then it will change all the navigation settings, the media settings, the steering wheel, the seat, you name it, uh, to wherever you set it at, okay? Which is really, really nice. Uh, now, this button up here is a share button and that's so I can share it with another screen, okay? So I'm just going to, that's where that is. We're going to go back here to home. Since we're in the navigation, let's plot a course. And the easiest way to do it is to use the assistance. You can click where to if you want, okay? But I just say, hey, Mercedes. How may I help you? Navigate to the closest subway. Like that blue line. Here is what I found. One. Calculating route. Hey Mercedes, cancel navigation. Canceling route guidance. Now I don't know if you caught the difference between the two commands, but when I gave the command to find a route, I paused after I said, "Hey, Mercedes," and then when I canceled it, I didn't. This is natural enough recognition for your speech that you can just say the sentence and you don't have to wait. Hey, Mercedes, navigate to the closest McDonald's. Here is what I found. Where do you want to go? Cancel. Okay, you see what I mean? So you can just say it as a sentence. You don't have to pause after saying the hey, Mercedes part. Okay, now. If I click down here on uh, the media, okay, I get this screen where I get uh, Sirius XM. This does have FM, and if I go into sources, okay, um, you can, of course, add USB and phone to that as well, okay? And then this one adjusts your favorites that you have, 
okay? And uh, if you go to the gear wheel setting, this is where you get to your sound. So no matter which media source you're into, that's where you're going to find it. you got a personal sound profile that you can create, which I won't go into, but it is really cool. Let's go backwards. Okay. Uh, different settings for the uh, Burmeister surround sound system. And by the way, this does have 750 watts of power and 15 speakers. You got an equalizer to adjust, balance and fader. This, of course, is a click drag. You do get some haptic feedback, which is interesting. Your stomach was growling. What it it kind of sounded like my stomach was growling, but uh, it, it, it was. So yes, you got a it it it's like it's like you're turning a, a dial that's got notches in it. You got sound focus where you want the focus in front or the rear, and then you've got loudness normalization, which adjusts the volume of the stereo compared to what it. It, it, it thinks that the uh, ambient noise is inside the car. So basically, as you're going faster over bumpy roads, it's going to increase the volume. The net result is, as you're driving, the volume always sounds the same, whether it's a noisier environment or a quieter environment, because it adjusts it for you. All right, well, let's take a look specifically at Sirius XM here. If I tap it again, I get the full screen. Right now, I can do this, scroll through. All right, so let's go right here, click on that. So what I want to do to make it a favor is I want to uh, click on it, and then I can click on the star. Then it's saved as a favorite. Okay, uh, how can I search other than scrolling through? Well, I can go in here, and then I can look at a channel list, a category, feature, uh, featured favorites, uh, tune mix. But if you know what you want, you just say, hey, Mercedes. How may I help you? Tune to channel 309 in Sirius XM. And there you go. So you don't even have to type it. You can just say it. Uh, but again, you know, here's, here's your volume right there. Um, if you press these buttons, you have the options to share this with the other screen. And if we hit settings here, now you're back to uh, the... Um, all the sound settings, okay? So really uh, a well laid out system. I, lo I love the fact that this bar is pretty consistent all the way throughout. If I go over to FM radio, it's gonna look exactly the same, okay? I wanna make a favorite, do it the same way. Uh, I can search, I can go right here. And uh, if I want to um, look at station lists, I can do that, and I can also mark them as a favorite there. I can look at just favorites if I want. And if I go here, I can delete the entry or edit it. And if I edit it, then I have a choice to rearrange the order of them or delete them. Okay, so that's uh, your Sirius XM. That's your FM radio. Uh, it does not have AM. It does have uh, wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, though which is really cool. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so if I press this button, here's the apps that you are probably most used to seeing. So if I go into this EQ one, here I get a, a charging information right here. And I can set the type of program that I want right here. Um, I can uh, turn on eco charging if I want. I can set the, the level of charge. Okay, um, and then I can open the socket flap, charging pause, or I can pre-temp the, 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 the battery um, right here. Now it's set to automatic. I can look at range, climate control, restrict functions. If I click on that, then it's going to adjust some of the climate functions to save range. And click again to shut it off. Okay. Uh, consumption. You can see a nice little graph here for seven every seven and a half minutes uh, or 30 minutes, 90 minutes, or up to three hours. All right. Under apps, this does have a dash cam. So if I turn that on, it's, uh, I don't have a storage device, so it's not going to come on. However, you can 
Uh, it'll record anything that it where it senses motion. So if there's an accident, it picks it up. And where you want to go to check those pictures, of course, there's a button right there, but it's the gallery. So under dash cam, there, what that button was right there is just grayed out right now. So if I go to the gallery, this is where you're going to be able to view pictures, okay? So they'll all be right in here. Um, so that is really cool that it uses its cameras to pick up anything uh, that might have hit your car. All right. You also have a browser. Okay. Uh, we don't have a data package, so I can't show you that, but, you know, it's just a typical Internet browser. Okay. Uh, you have energy energizing coach here. So you can actually uh, set it up with your heart rate. So that's, that's kind of an interesting feature. Um, uh, let's see. You do have a beginning driver mode and a valet service. But for all those, you need to be connected to Mercedes Me. So I'm just going to tell you that they're there. Okay. Real quickly here under settings, you have some of your driving things. So for assistance, you got your active distance um, assist distronic. These are where you're going to be able to make settings to your safety system. So if I click on it, now I've got choice to adopt speed limit, route-based speed adaption. So as you're driving and navigation, if the sign changes to 50, the car changes to 50 miles per hour. If it goes back to 65, the car goes back to 65. Okay, and then you can make these things for the braking and accelerating. Okay, let's go back here. Active steering assist can be on or off. Active lane change assist on or off. Downhill speed regulation, all that can do there. You have collision avoidance systems. Okay, so for your electronic stability program, you can have that on or off. And then active brake thing, again, it's on or off. You see the little gear wheel? If you have a gear wheel, that means that you can change some settings. Warning brake intervention, early, medium, or late. Well, <laughs> I probably wouldn't leave it on late, but uh, that's where you make those adjustments. So let's go over to the vehicle for a minute. Uh, so you can uh, have GPS-based raising. So if you come to a spot where you want the vehicle to be a little higher or a little lower, you can mark that with a GPS, and every time you get to that, perhaps it's a speed bump. And it raises the vehicle at that GPS set point without you doing anything. And then when you go past that GPS point, it lowers the car back to, or raises the car, whatever the case is, uh, back into uh, the, the position you had it previously set. So that is really cool. Snow chain mode on or off. Creep function on or off. Trailer type if you're pulling a trailer. Car wash mode. That's where that is. Some people have asked about that. Okay. That's where you would activate that. Okay. All right, um, won't go through all these, but they all work pretty much the same. So if I go to uh, dynamic select, because that has to do with our uh, drive modes. So you can adjust drive, suspension, steering, electronic stability, and sound. And we'll go into two of these. So if I go into drive, I can say when I put it in drive, I actually want it to be in sport. This is the individualized, customized preference. Okay, so that's right there. Now. Let's go into light. Okay. For digital light, you can have the dynamic low beam on or off, daytime running lights on or off, projection when opening and closing. Okay. If I look at system here, I can have the Hey Mercedes function off. I can also go into the gear wheel. This is kind of a cool feature. Let's say you don't want anyone else in your car to be able to say, Hey, Mercedes. click those guys off, and the only person that can use a Mercedes is the driver. So you can actually assign who is able to use that. Pretty cool. So under comfort, you've got a, some more adjustments, all right? You have massaging seats, and, and this is front and rear seats as well. Okay, up front here, we're controlling the uh, driver and passenger, and you click the play button to activate whatever you set. Classic massage, mobilizing massage, activating massage. You just press the play button and away. Oh, yes, I see. I feel that already. Hot, relaxing back, hot, relaxing shoulders, wave massage, deep waves, deep workout. Holy buckets. By the time you get to where you're going, you're going to be completely worked out. 
Okay. But but that's cool. So that's not just the safety seat, you know, they, the, where we see in Mercedes where sometimes they the kinetic seat connects, where they just move the seat enough to keep you awake. This is actually massaging seats. All right. Uh, as far as the seat goes here, you can adjust the lumbar right here just with your hand. And you can feel it, you know, pretty much immediately adjust. You have... Uh, you have side bolsters here you can adjust, which I really like the side bolsters. Uh, and then you got heating settings here for steering wheel. You can set the balance for, you know, where do you want to heat? Do you want it just in the back? Do you want it just in the seat? Or do you want it on both? All right, X out of there. Ambient light. I already told you this had uh, like 108, 190 different color combinations. But here's the basics of it. So right now it's set on monochrome. So as I change colors, you can look up in the dash and you can see that change. This has lighting everywhere. So there's there's lighting underneath the driver's dash area. There's lighting in the doors uh, in, in multiple places. There's lighting on the seats on the side of the seats. Um, it's pretty much like a, wow, yeah, it's amazing <laughs> how many lights there are in here. So. This is how you can adjust it if you want a monochrome color. If you want multicolor, you just click there. And, of course, you can choose a scheme that's going to give you a variety of colors throughout the car. Some blue, some white, some whatever it's preset to do. You also have some effects that you can do. So you can have um, color animation. Now you're going to notice it's changing. Now. Personally, that would drive me crazy, but it is kind of cool to see all where the subtle changes are, you know, uh, in, in the lighting. But that is just really, really cool. I am going to turn that off, though. All right. Now, if I go to brightness, this is where you can adjust um, all of the different zones. So you have the direct zone. You have the indirect zones. You have the accents. And then, of course, you have the light band. Okay, so all that is there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to effects here. And I'm just going to go to color and switch it back to monochrome. And we'll switch it to there. Oh, look at that changing. Okay, that's interesting. I turned that off. I'm, just... doing, it I'm doing it back here. Are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm making it dance with you. Okay. We're, so where did this go? <laughs> so th so this is the problem with modern cars. You need to have a way to shut it off for the passengers. So I'm sitting here thinking, why is it still going? I, I turned off colored animation and it's still blinking. You know, it turns out doorknobs in the back changing them for me because somehow he has access to that. It's the last time I take him on a trip. All right. That's that's pretty funny. Well, hey, that just goes to speak about the things that you can control in the rear screens, which is basically you can control anything up here from those rear screens. All right. Energizing comfort. Um, you can have freshness, warmth, vitality, joy, and then just press play. And whatever that is, it will do it. It even selects music for you. Oh, your seat's massaging. You got the nice music going. The stars are twinkling across on the passenger side. So that that that's pretty cool. I got to admit. All right, just just a fun thing. Now you notice how now all of a sudden I got more things up here because the car is is trying to learn my habits and it thinks that's what I want. So, but way way cool. Okay. Um, Phone, we already talked about radio. Let's quickly talk about media. That's where you're gonna I, you're gonna see Bluetooth and USB right there. Um, let's we'll come back to that. We've already talked about radio. Let's look at info quick. You get a nice uh, energy flow screen here. And then if you want to look at vehicle, you can see acceleration, braking, and then your degree of tilt and your degree of incline. Okay, just some really nice graphics. Okay.
Um, Off-road gauge. This looks really good here. I showed you in the driver's dashboard, but it looks really good here. And it's customizable. So you got your compass here. you got your elevation. you got your how many degrees uh, north you are, your position. And then you can change tire, um, tire pressure to tire temperature to position to drive so you can see which wheels are engaging. They'll give you a little colored meter. And then back to tire pressure. Over here, you get suspension, tire temperature, position. So you're going to get the same things. And the, but with the addition of the suspension, this side did not have suspension. No. So the additional thing here is you get the suspension, how much the, the, the wheels are, are moving. That is just sweet. And I, and I love this, this graphic here for the degree of your, your turning. Um, that's just awesome. Down here. Of course, you get parking sensors on or off, trash control on or off, um, hill descent on or off, and then raise or lower the car. That is a cool, cool, cool graphic. All right. Now, there is no nothing else in here. It can't swipe either way. So I'm going to set up my phone for Apple CarPlay. We are in Apple CarPlay. So I'm going to go back here. Apple CarPlay, if you've never seen it before, is awesome. It's like Bluetooth on steroids. Uh, basically, uh, it'll take any app on your phone that will work with the car and put it up here. So it won't use any app, but it uses any navigation app will show up, media apps that'll play uh, audio, like audio books, podcasts, anything of that type will show up in here. So basically, I've got the vehicle's got a great video augmented navigation. Here, I've got Apple Maps if I want. I've got Waze. I've got Google Maps. Okay. I've got TuneIn Radio. I've got uh, Onyx Off Road there. Probably wouldn't use it in, in here, but, you know, trails might be a little small. You got music, news, podcasts, phone, etc. This is your most recently used stuff. And if I go here, I can get a nice split view. So this is, um, of course, navigation. This is search for navigation. This is media. Quick controls. Okay, so if I want to switch to the next screen, it'll bring it right up. Well, right now it's on an advertisement. So, okay. But that is uh, Apple CarPlay in a nutshell. It's, it's awesome. So that's how you're going to hook to Apple CarPlay and how you're going to get to it. Now if I go to home again... You notice that this used to be a media app. Now it says Apple CarPlay. And if you did Android Auto, it would say Android Auto right there. Sorry, I quit bumping the center console select here, and I am uh, changing things. Okay. Um, so I do want to show you uh, um, real quick here the parking cameras. Now, you do have a parking button that you can push. And, of course, it activates camera. I'm sorry, we've got a cloth hanging over the mirrors, and so it's picking that up a little bit. You just tap the screen, and these selections come up. So this is the overhead view. i got to actually be, there we go. Okay, this is uh, my rear camera. This is from my left side. This is from my right side. Okay, this is auto. Okay, it's not active here. It's probably because we have the cloth there. But then it senses uh, if you need the front camera or the rear camera. This is that button I was talking about. If I click here, the GPS, the GPS position is saved, and the camera will automatically switch on at this location. So if you always want a camera, a certain camera on at a certain location, you can program in that. Just like we, I showed you, you can do that by raising or lowering the height of the car. I mean, that is cool. But look at that nice picture. I mean, it doesn't take up the entire screen. There's still a gap here, but it's really, really a nice view. Um, and if I, of course, switch into reverse, you're going to see that not only do I get the safety zones here, like the, you know, if there's something in front of me, I get dynamic swivel guidelines in both. Now, you see these outside lines, the thin yellow lines? That's uh, a way of saying, okay, if you can line that up with the edges of your your, your parking lines, then you'll have enough room to open up the doors. Red line, don't back past that. That's your bumper. It's going to hit. These are your tire marks. So it kind of tells you, if I turn like this, this is where my tires are going to go if I don't change the wheel. So really, really, really nice feature. Now, I should mention that, say, for instance, when I'm in this view here, I can take and drag. And I can look around the car. 
Okay, that is just way, way cool. I absolutely love that. And again, that's just a, a cover we have over the, the windshield to help keep the, the glare off the screen. Okay, but awesome camera. Really, really, really nice. And uh, this does have park assist. So if you want it to automatically park, you can do that. You just hit the camera button here, parking assistance, okay? And then you, you're just driving and it will find, a, it'll parallel park you, it'll perpendicular park you. If you use the automatic parking to parallel or perpendicular park, it will also use parking assist to get you out of the spot. If you park manually, and then you get in the car and say, oh, I, I'm going to use parking assist to get me out. It won't work. You have to use it to back in in order to use it to back out. Okay. Um, all right. Drive modes. Let's 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 um, get back to the home screen here quick. So you have a dynamic select button on the center console, and I'm just going to click on that. So here we go. You remember earlier we set an individual mode. I showed you where to do that. That's I. That's where we changed all these things, okay? And you can actually go into it right from here and just click the gear wheel, okay? All right. And I showed you this already, but you can just go in here and change any setting that you want to make it individual. All right. You have sport. You have comfort, eco, and, of course, off-road. And they limit your speed, okay? So... I'm just going to go back to comfort for a minute. But that is just really, really, really neat um, that you can do that from there. Now, you have an EQ button. And if I press that, that's the same thing we got earlier. There was an EQ button up on the screen. You got a car icon. If I click that, you get some uh, real quick on-off kind of things. HUD display, you can turn that right off right there. Or you can turn it on. Downhill speed regulation. Okay, you can set that. It's like a cruise control, but going downhill. Turn off your parking sensors, uh, car wash mode, on or off. So a lot of quick things, which is really smart because you go to car wash mode, you don't want to dig through all your uh, settings. It's right there. So that's what that car icon does. That's basically it for the driver screen and infotainment screen um, that I will quickly mention on the passenger screen. So the passenger screen is identical to this screen in function. Uh, with the exception of a couple of things. One is you can hook a separate phone to it, uh, and you can stream your own music. Then you would want to also hook up a set of Bluetooth headphones. You can share some things between the screens, like you can share a navigation point. So if you're traveling with somebody, they say, can you plot the course? Yeah. Okay. Of course, you can just tell the car to do that as well, but it's a nice screen to have. If you use the web browser and you are connected to the Internet, Yes, on the passenger screen and on the rear entertainment screens, you can go to YouTube and play YouTube videos. You can go to Netflix. You can go to Amazon Prime. It's all web-based, okay? So it's not streaming off your phone or anything. It's an actual, it's going to a web address, and you're playing it from there. You'll need to sign in, and you need to have um, a Wi-Fi package with the car. But you can certainly do that. But... Uh, the passenger screen does not work unless someone's sitting in there. And when no one's in there, it gives you a beautiful little star, uh, kind of a, a grill, like the front of the car grill look. But it looks more uh, more like outer space. It's a very nice look. And then the rear screens will operate manually. Uh, you can just touch them, and then it, they work again exactly like the front screen. In fact, you can control the front screen, as Rob was doing earlier with the ambient lighting, from those. Now, in addition to that, it comes with a small remote that sits in the, uh, would be the armrest in the rear that you can control the screens from as well. And you can share information from those screens to this screen. Um, and so, and I think you can go to either of the screens. So that means you can have up to at least four phones hooked up individually in your car and everyone can enjoy their own stuff. And again, those have the web browsers in them, okay? Um, I'm pretty sure when you're driving, even though this does have the web browser, it's going to block things like Netflix and YouTube once you start driving. However, uh, I've not driven it to prove that, but the passenger, the, the three passengers will be able to do it. So really, really nice system. We hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.